Hi, welcome to vidcast number, oh, you would ask me that. <laughs> I can't remember. I think we're at 12 or 13, something like that. I'm Richard Bliss, the Game Whisperer. I'm joined by... Aldo Giazzi from Impressions. And we have a special guest today. Hi, I'm Joe Goodman from Goodman Games. Special guest, because you know, if you've watched on a regular basis, we've had Joe's stuff on here all the time. One of all those favorites to uh, show off. So we thought, why not just bring the man in himself? So well, we were lucky enough that Joe moved to the lovely Bay Area a little over a year ago. Has it only been that long? A little over a year, right? It's been a, yeah, about a year. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And so uh, this is great. And he comes in your regular uh, participant yes. in our game nights. Our yes, we do night. talk about that as well. Yes. Yes. I come here to get beaten in Puerto Rico by Richard. That's, that's really why I come here. <laughs> yeah, that's only because payback for that Parkinson that I will never forget. All right. So we're lucky to have Joe uh, off his regular work schedule uh, to come visit us uh, before we do our traditional game night. As you can see, we have a lot of releases. They're all RPG related actually from what is releasing from Impressions and how ironic that since Joe and Goodman Games are all RPG related, we're gonna focus very heavy on that today. Um, but the first, um, the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna talk to Joe, interview him a little bit and uh, why don't you start by saying how Goodman Games started, what got you started, Sure. Um, and how long you've been doing it? Uh, I've been doing Goodman Games for probably 12 years now, something like that. Quite a while, longer mm -hmm. than I realized. 13, 13 years Except Impressions. Except I'm very old now. Yeah, no, you, yeah you've been <laughs> with been Impressions while. most of the time, 11 yeah, years. I have. Yeah, yeah. Um, and I started in the D20 boom when Dungeons & Dragons 3rd Edition came out, and everybody and their mother jumped on the bandwagon. <laughs> and then I think there's a couple of us left. Me, uh, Steve from Troller Games, and maybe one other guy. Green uh, Ronin. Green Ronin, yeah. You know, I, I think Mongoose is twisted away from We're doing miniatures uh, RPGs. Um, you know, Fantasy Flight still does RPGs. Yep. Uh, Paizo, of course, with Pathfinder. Yeah. So, yeah, I mean, obviously there's others, but uh, it's nice to see a I'm, few. I'm one of the originals. <laughs> I'm old school. Old school. <laughs> so, and, and with all that, let's zoom up 11 years. Sure. You know, what are you doing now? What's the focus of Goodman Games for those who haven't watched me and my ranting about your product when you've had releases? So right now I focus heavily on Dungeon Crawl Classics role-playing game, and we have here a sample. Woohoo! Um, I published for D&D 3rd edition and D&D 4th edition, and of course there's always another edition on the horizon, but I ended up sort of having this void in my heart where I felt like something wasn't quite right and I needed to go back to my roots, which was what I played back in the 70s and the 80s. And so I designed a game that uh, ties into the modern rules, but has a real feeling back for what you, what we all remember playing back in the glory days of RPGs. Well, tell, okay, so I'm going to bring up something. Sure. I mean, I, my, first, my question was going to be what, you know, what's the twist of DCC and all that other stuff. I got to tell you, when people ask me that, the first thing I tell them about is funneling. Yes, the character so, funnel. You got to talk about that because I think I think it's so cool. So many people have had fun. So when we all played D and D for the first time back in the seventies and eighties, we all rolled up some guy. It took us like five minutes to roll him up because he had six stats and he picked a weapon and that was it. <laughs> then you went in and you fought like a, a white or something in your first encounter and your guy died. And then you're like, shoot. Then you rolled up another guy and it took you five minutes. And then you <laughs> went in and sent him in. And four or five guys died before somebody finally killed the white against the orc or the yeah, goblin. Whatever. All those little. And then he kept going. And then fast forward twenty five years, D and D third edition comes along, and then fourth edition. You spend about three hours min maxing your character. It becomes this huge investment. You're terrified to have him die. Your your DM frankly will never kill him off because it's one of those painful events. And uh, the game just lost a lot of that magic that was the, the unknown, the fear of death. It just didn't exist anymore. Um, so we have reinstilled the fear of death here at Goodman Games. So, <laughs> <laughs> Tagline. <laughs> you know this is fictional, right? <laughs> so if you play a Dungeon Crawl Classics role-playing game, the way you create a character, instead of spending hours on backstory and designing all your feats and everything else, uh, you roll them up randomly. You start with... You, a, wait, you said them. Oh, that's right. Let's there's, expand on There's this. always more than one. You typically start with three to four characters. Uh, you, you control. Most, if not all, to die. Uh, they have basically stats, a randomly determined possession, which is, you know, it could be a pitchfork, it might be a goat. Uh, it's sort of the table tells you. A lantern. Uh, <laughs> goats are great for okay. dissolving traps, you send them in first. Uh, and then you have a randomly determined occupation that could be anything from a brewer to a shipmaker to a. Um, I mean, you could be an armor. I mean, you could get lucky and be an armor or a noble or something yeah. like that. Uh, you could also be a gong farmer. If you're not familiar with that, are you guys familiar with gong farmers? I don't know what a gong farmer is. This is a family this episode, a, so we'll keep yeah. it clean. But back in the medieval era, when you did your thing in a chamber pot and threw it out the window, the guys who <laughs> picked that up in the morning were called gong farmers. Uh, <laughs> so, anyway. Sorry. I didn't know ready. that. I'm sorry. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 
So, so we you say you're a party of gong farmers and archers and brewers and everything in the dungeon. It's called a funnel because most of them die. You come out the other side and a handful Lots of characters must go in. Funnel down to one. By the time you come out, you end up, uh, you know, usually one guy survives per, per player. Um, you might end up with four players and one guy loses everybody. Somebody else has two and you kind of redistribute them. Um, and it's a lot of fun because you create your character by experiencing something together. You remember who did what brave deed when they were zero level and had one hit point. And then you give them a class and name them and then become their characters. So you give all of that to them after they've survived the... Well, it's the experience. It really, I mean, yeah. I, you probably haven't played it, it sounds like. Not. <laughs> but I played it a couple of times. I've ran it at Free RPG Day last year. Um, so anyway, I, I've had, I mean, the fun of creating your characters and just dying. I had people actively going, I'll go first because I have four characters. <laughs> I'll touch the door handle. It was very funny. So, and I'm doing that again locally uh, for Free RPG Day. But let's focus on real quick. You have four iterations of the book, one of which we haven't even released yet. Yes. So let's just quickly, we already did the core book. We've shown so these So why don't before. you hold that one? We've shown these before. Yes. So limited here's edition. Here's the basic book. This yeah. is the new Jeff Easley cover. Um, the yeah. amazing Jeff Easley illustrated an all-new painting just for a Dungeon Crawl Classics role-playing game. And then, of course, we have the others as well. Everybody plays games, and everybody buys a copy of the player's handbook. And frankly, it just gets boring having five copies of the same book around the table. So you have your choice as to what cover art you want. And that gives you the, the chance to. to it's play like the game a it's like a comic want. book variant cover yeah, concept. Like that. Yeah, 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 yeah. No, a lot of people that's, like that. I mean, that's yeah, cool artwork. Yeah, so Jeff Easley, we'll people now showing you that um, close up there. That's so cool. let's roll into. I mean, you have other releases, of course. I know do, there's yes. two other adventure releases. You can grab the, the yellow one, one and the blue one. Yeah, and the Sea Queen escapes down below. So the the core experience for Dungeon Crawl Classics, um, you buy one rule book, which, which is kind of thick. But what I commit to you, your viewer is you will never have to buy another rule book. I don't like the the era of source book expansion that has come upon us. D&D 2nd Edition? Yes. 3rd Edition and 4th Edition and, fourth edition and, and oh, everything. Wow. Okay. This, Started with that. <laughs> Started with that, but yeah. Um, a lot of role-playing game companies now make their living on, on uh, coming up with reasons to sell you something else. Supplement after supplement. After supplement. We, we published one core book, which is kind of thick, but there will never be another one that says everything you need to play. There are no expansions. There will be no supplements. Once every year or two, we might do an annual that has sort of, you know, new rules have cropped up or clarifications, but no plans to ever publish another source book. What we publish instead are modules. So you have fun with your friends playing these adventures. Tons of modules are in Hue. Yeah, there's... We'll do a cutout, full cutout yeah. cut off to Hue, and there'll be... A, this is Hue the Barbarian over He's there. the P.O.P. Um, display. Hey, Hue the Barbarian is from the back cover. He is our official mascot. There you go. Um, he's the only barbarian you'll find wearing pinstripe bell bottoms. He epitomizes the 1970s style in Europe. That we like to go now, as much as I know you want to focus so much intensely on the product and tell people everything great about it, uh, let's transition into what you have for Free RPG Day. Yes. And then I'm going to talk about Free RPG Day. And then we're going to ask you some industry questions. Why don't you talk about Free RPG Day first? Then he'll tell us about what he's got for our well, Free RPG Day. Okay. Well, obviously, Free RPG Day is sold out. So uh, thanks to all the stores who have signed up. If you don't know, it's always the third Saturday in June uh, at your friendly local game store. Hopefully, you are one of those friendly local game stores. Uh, you should have gotten your poster already sent to you if you're participating. If not, it's on the website. And Goodman Games has basically... Well, I mean, do we have a? I have thirty have seconds ever, for a quick story. Have you ever story. told anybody the story? I've told RPG people the story started. individually, but we'll tell. Okay. Free RPG Day was created where Joe didn't live here, and he was in town visiting his wife's family. And he says, "Let's meet up in Berkeley and go to a Games of Berkeley, which is one of the great local game stores here." And says, "Let's have lunch." And he sits down. And he goes, "I got a thing to do." And Joe's a notebook guy. He has a physical notebook. He can hear us. Oh yeah, that's right. <laughs> that's right there. So he goes down. Well, then he goes, and then I want to do like free comic book day. And we're gonna call it free adventure module day. And I looked at him. I go, Joe, that's a horrible name. Just call it free RPG day, and we'll give away quick start rules and adventures. He goes, okay. And so I moved forward, and that was literally the conversation. Wow. That quick. And I went through and I did the j -j 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 -j, and I said, okay, Joe, what do you think? And he's like, sure. And then we got Troll Lord Games to do it, and then I just started asking friends in the industry. And we got like 120 stores the first year. Um, and like, it was awesome. Though. I don't know, it was I pretty mean, cool. We're lining like, up outside the store to yeah. get the free. So now it's grown. This is yeah. the seventh annual free RPG day. You know, Paizo, Troll Lord Games, uh, a, a long list of companies. And that is an advanced copy of the giveaway for free RPG day, which is a Dungeon Crawl Classics quick start and adventure and an X Crawl quick start and adventure. Yes, X Crawl is coming back. A lot of folks love oh. X Crawl. X Crawl, you could, uh, it's All hard from to the describe. D20 days. <laughs> yes. But well, next, it's, it's Running Man. It's, it's, kind of, it's kind of like Running Man. It's kind of like TV game shows. It's kind of like a Smash TV. Smash TV. It's like D&D &D if you turn it into a game show, but you might actually die. But you might win a lot of money. 
Um, but if you, if you don't succeed, you go back to your job at the mall. That's the tagline. So yeah, anyway, it, it's an awesome, awesome game. We're bringing it back with Pathfinder Rules. They'll come out later this year. And this is the first chance you'll have to take a look at it. Okay, and that's at Free RPG Day. Free yes, RPG Day. at your local game store yeah. Saturday, June fifteenth. Go to freerpgday.com to see which stores are participating. And if you are a store, make sure your listing is correct, please. Saturday, June fifteenth. And actually, I'll be if ready. You didn't things. understand what Locals, he said. He said Saturday, June fifteenth. Go look at it. He always adds a little color to the to our to our conversation. Thank God you're here as a buffer. <laughs> so, so the then the last thing. So basically, uh, Joe, what. Uh, Richard and I used to do we pack Actually, wait, let me throw oh, you wanna, oh, just to let people know, if you're a store participating, we have lots of free swag, like these oh. wonderful buttons. Oh, sorry. We have a Bookmark. belt buckle. I'm wearing a belt with this belt buckle, but folks I, wanted to censor I'm it. not taking a picture of his belt buckle while it's on his body. <laughs> we have a t-shirt. We have too. a t-shirt. Oh, how, have, could I, how could I go past We have this? badge ribbons. Yes. Oh. Anyway, lots of freebies, so stores get in touch if you want some stuff. Your gut buster belt buckle. <laughs> <laughs> now he's just extending this a little too long. So, so, like, rodeo type stuff. Oh, rodeo, a lot. Grass professional. Fed. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. It's yeah. grass-fed rodeo. Yeah, right. You can wear it as you kill your players. Hence the goat. Yes. 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 Goat ropers. Yes. Okay. Yeah, right. right on. So, one of the things that I, I, I told Joe and I thought was so interesting, because every conversation Richard and I have about game releases, board games, card games, whatever it may be, even tons of the role-playing games, you know, Kickstarter, Kickstarter. It's all about the crowdfunding now. Most people are doing it. And so we always talk about that a lot. And I know retailers are ambivalent about it. But, I, you know, the state of the RPG industry, I mean, it's, for, in case nobody knows, it's boomed. I mean, Kickstarter, obviously, yeah. with releases. Now, do retailers and distributors carry more? Yeah. Not really. It's still a, a niche market of a niche. It's flooded still. RPGs still don't sell the large quantities that they used to be, except, of course, a few exceptions. But for the most part, if you're a new guy, you're not a new guy, and you actually don't do Kickstarter. Why? <laughs> I'm just, with me? No, I mean, it's it's the trend in the industry right now. You're an RPG guy, throw up $3,000, you know, boom, yeah. I can do a book. So, I mean, do you have a fee? I mean, what's your feeling? What's your, your thoughts? I don't have a problem with Kickstarter, but I think I benefited from being in the industry at a time when distribution channels were easy to establish. Mm -hmm. And that D20 boom, retailers were ordering... Uh, anything with the D20 logo. And so I established a relationship with a lot of those stores. So I, I haven't had some of the challenges that I think uh, mm -hmm. some of the newer folks have reaching out to the stores. I've always uh, maintained a retailer friendly stance. So I, I charge full price on my website. I charge shipping. I don't undercut shipping with the retailers in any way. Um, you know, offer, if you can get it through stores, you can also get it on my website. If you can get it from me at a con, you can also get it at stores. Generally, I just, you know, go for the fair playing field. Um, and I think over time, over whatever, 12 years, it's yeah. just, it paid off in a lot of stores, you know, they place orders for my stuff, even the, the sort of unusual multiple covers, even the special editions. So I haven't really had to go to Kickstarter yet. Um, maybe the, that day will come, but for the time being, I feel, you know, I trust the retailers to place their orders. And these special and editions are like, I mean, they're the epitome of what Kickstarter is. Something yeah, they are. extra, yeah. but you're not, I mean, it's available through distribution, yeah. a little more pricier, whatever it may be. But, um, I mean, who knows down the road, maybe the right product will come along for Kickstarter that can't work in distribution channels or is, is highly unusual for retailers or something. But for the time being, I mean, retailers are very equipped to sell these modules. So it fits their shelves, it works. Good answer. It's yeah. not for everybody. No, it definitely is. But, you know, there are a couple. And as much as I love my buddy Steve at Troll Lord Games and Castles and Crusades, but Troll Lord Games, they've gone on Kickstarter for a couple of projects. Yeah. Even, the, I, I mean, I believe Green Ronin as well has gone on I Kickstarter, Kickstarter for, recently. Did Troll Lord do a, a beer Kickstarter? It's like $3,000 to buy Steve some beer. I don't know. <laughs> uh, they right? tried. They tried crowdfunding on their own site, and they did actually okay. But then they went back. To, they did Kickstarter. Went to their site. Went back to Kickstarter. You know, so they've kind of dabbled in it. So, but if you're a new RPG, I mean, Monty, if you're a new guy, it totally makes sense. But we've I talked to Monty. Yeah. We've talked about Monty Cook. I mean, he wasn't going to have trouble getting distribution yeah. with his name, but he went that that way. Well, talk to Mark Miller, uh, traveler. Oh, right, with his book. Uh, that's what he did. He did Kickstarter. So I think that for. It's it's interesting because some of these older brands who maybe let it lapse, let yeah. the relationships lapse that you're talking about, they have brand recognition, but they don't have the relationships anymore in the distribution channel. And it makes total sense for them to put up the brand and then everybody and their dog saying, oh, man, yeah. I remember playing that. I'll, yeah. I'll hand over some money. You know, it's yeah. funny. I, I will tell you one of the biggest trends, like Joe and I have said, we've known each other for a long time. I've done impressions for 13 years and he's done Goodman Games for 12. I mean, he was a client little bit after his second product. Um, so we've been doing this for a long time. And one of the biggest changes in the distributor situation was if you sold your sold into the distributor 
and said, hey, I want to convince you, Mr. Distributor, to carry my game, they were very proactive. The, the, the distributors, not that they don't sell, and not don't get all, but it was more proactive where the retailers would be like, what should I have to sell? Because they relied on their distributor to say what's the greatest thing. And that's how all these old school, the travelers and all that proactive sales into retail. Now yeah. it's very reactive. But you gotta, I mean, you gotta be fair very to the distributors. Reactive, yeah. You've all oh, heard of, of the iPad. I mean, you know, the era of, I shouldn't say this given what I do, but the era of the print product has definitely changed. You know, it, it's a different time for, if you're doing a board game, you can't do a, I mean, some board games do adapt well to iPad, but there's a lot of board games that just don't translate digitally the way that, a, you know, an RPG does. And so distributors go yeah. where they can. It, and it's funny you bring that up because we had an episode where we were talking about digital crossing over and how sales and, you know, Days of Wonder is, is yeah. making a lot of money off of digital board game crossover. It's yeah. working really well for them. And then I've had clients go, hey, Aldo, don't worry about my game not selling. Uh, you know, we're getting a, an iPad version in a few months and it comes out and it's like nothing happens. Yeah. You know, it's so, yes, I agree with it. I believe in PDFs. I believe in digital downloads. I believe in all of that. I'm a firm believer of access. What does the person want and how? You know, do they just want it on their iPad digitally only? Do they want a physical book? I'm a physical book person as well. I think there, and Joe, you're proving there are a lot of people out there who are physical book people. And they just like the, they like, yeah, I own a Kindle. Kindle. I've discovered I've stopped buying books on Kindles because I forget what I bought. Oh, right? Wow. I forget the book. I, I'm reading it halfway. I set the Kindle down. I walk away and I forget, <laughs> oh, I'm reading that book. And so the next thing I know, it's like, oh, don't I own that book? And yeah. so instead, you'll see behind me that I continue to buy books in physically because no, there's something special about having a book. Right, you love the cover there. art, you have it right there. You have the collector impulse, which it's, you don't have the same right. sense of you if you have it digitally. Yeah, it's part of the experience. Yeah, it's part of the experience. Yeah. Well, this has been great. Well, Happy yeah, what? Well, yeah, I mean, uh, sorry, conclude uh, a little bit. Complete ish. <laughs> you were about to say conclude, something. and then he'll continue. Yeah. In conclusion, <laughs> um, that's all about I have to say. No. Well, I. <laughs> <laughs> Can we edit? No. Um, let's quickly no go through. Editing. Obviously, this whole time you've been seeing these, we usually talk about releases. I don't want to dismiss what is coming down. And, true. and, and just to go back to the belt buckle, uh, the reason we're that. not showing the belt buckle is because this In is use. This is boxers only episode, so we're only wearing boxers. And this, but I do have a belt. He does have a belt with his boxers, and so that's. I said I'm not showing that. Okay. So so, so basically, we're just going to cut through these quite quickly. There are RPG themed. A lot of them are part of series that are already out. So we've talked about uh, Mutant Epoch. Um, this we, is Beyond the Red Crater, which is another supplement. This is good stuff. Great. See, art. he actually does art. Yeah. William McAuslin, the guy behind this, has also illustrated for Good the Games. He yeah. does great work. So art. how cool he has his own thing. This is from a new client, Chronicle City. Uh, the guy running this has worked in the UK in the game industry for a long, long time. He was part of Cubicle 7, uh, retail store outlets out there. And this is their very first release. Chronicle City. It's a Call of Cthulhu official uh, supplement book about weapons. Uh, many of you are probably familiar with Hellas. Uh, it's basically we've showcased some of the three hundred, yeah. the movie three hundred in space. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we've got a couple new releases from there: a hardback and then uh, an adventure uh, arc book. And then, of course, I mentioned my buddy at Troll Lord Games. Castles and Crusades is my local game group that I play. Beyond coming to Richards, I go and play CNC. Uh, Codex Keldarum, I got to tell you personally from gaming, I've been looking forward to this. I need more spells and more monsters and, you know, exp character expansions. I know you said supplements aren't a thing, but for me, we've been playing two and a half years with CNC with just the standard book. And I'm like, I need some more spells and abilities. I'm tired of the same thing. Um, and by the way, Troller Games is the only gaming company in the industry that's cooler than Gimmick Games. Cooler? And they, they also only wear boxers. <laughs> we could go there with stories. Um, and then the last one, Expeditious Retreat has been doing... Uh, this series um, uh, for one-on-one -on -one adventures uh, for a very long time. Um, so that's Red Tooth Ridge, which is the latest release, and it's the 28th uh, in the wow. release. So uh, again, lots of RPG talking right now. Well, with uh, RPG free RPG day coming I up, mean, yeah. with Joe available, we thought it was a great opportunity to actually kind of just cover the gambit. Yeah, and I'm running I'm running uh, games at my local store, Black Diamond Games in Concord, California. Gary Ray, the owner. Has a great blog. If you're a store owner, you got to read it. You're gonna stop in a game castle in I Santa Clara. I gotta confirm it, but yes, that's my plan. To so go by game castle. Game in Santa castle Clara. in Santa Clara. Yeah. Are you gonna come play? No, that's come not on. not Richard's thing. <laughs> we just it's all day. I'm there from morning until <laughs> until close. Uh, and you know, I'll kill your character for you. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, 
we, so we, do we still have a few minutes? You can tell about your very first role playing game experience, or the first one in a very long time. You just did it over. Oh yeah, uh, not my very first. Well, I, my because my very first was uh, when I bought the. Uh, I remember when the Monster Manual came out for D and D. Nineteen what is that? Eighty is that nineteen eighty? Something like that. Something. Yeah, yeah. seventy eight. I was working for a uh, game store at the time when that came out. So oh, yeah, there you go. So yeah, I go back a ways. Uh, but one of my favorite metagaming's uh, fantasy trip. That was my favorite. I still have the original uh, fantasy trip from Steve Jackson. Wow, uh, metagaming cool. games. Oh, awesome stuff. I uh, love that. So I've convinced my kids that's D and D. I teach them to play <laughs> that. That's D and D. You Let's know, play some D and D. You know, Wizards of the Coast, and I'm sure many of the retailers know this, but just for our conversation, Wizards of the Coast uh, in the next two weeks, Memorial Day weekend, is releasing. Um, the that's the second edition. The book, second right? edition four books. Yeah, I think it's the second what? edition four. of the D and D, and then the releases. original white box books are being released in October or November. I got rid of my white box books yeah. at KubaCon, I think last year, oh. two years ago. Did you get a good price? Oh, I'm going to be. A I have no idea. Huh? I didn't care. So, that's why. <laughs> <laughs> so, 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 I didn't care. <laughs> but my experience was, and this is a new trend in RPGing, and that is uh, Google Talk, uh, Google Hangout. Oh yeah, yeah, Excuse yeah, me. yeah. Google Hangout. Yeah. People use that. Or Skype. He did it. Yeah, yeah oh, I, really. I got to do it for a short with Silver Griffin Games. Um, and it really does allow you now to expand your, if somebody moves away from their gaming group, it allows them to continue to be part of it. And it was, and Silver Griffin did it very uh, interesting. I was very engaged, even though it was just me here by myself, but everybody, the dice rolling, the involvement, it was all, it was very cool. So yeah, I did enjoy that. Yeah, that's cool. Well, and then what's next? We're I was all going to. I was a Persian eunuch. Persian eunuch. Yeah, that's awesome. the best kind of eunuch. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That was when you line up all the eunuchs and compare them, yeah, Please, a Persian I need to wear the T-shirt. Please don't tell me about your character. What is it? <laughs> Especially like, if he's a eunuch. Yeah, yeah. I don't want to know. I don't want to know. And then in two weeks, you know, or Memorial Day weekend, as we'll put a stamp on it, we'll all be at KubaCon in Burlingame, California, at the Hyatt. I uh, won't. You would, yeah, I thought you were coming. I know. Uh, I did too until my wife informed me that she'll be out of town. So, so you have children. Oh, uh, Bring the kids. Yeah, it's a family yeah, friendly yeah, yeah, yeah. we'll, we'll Play D and D with them. Yeah, and yeah, so uh, we'll, we'll see what happens. We're, we're getting him on camera. He can't see. It'll be one of the few right times. Uh, it'll be many years that I haven't gone, so I don't think I'll be able to go, yeah. which will be a shock. Well, that's for me. that. That'll be a because last year I did. Are. Last year I did uh, GameX, Strategic Con, and KublaCon, wow. which oh, are wow. both on Memorial Weekend. Uh, one's in LA and one's in San Francisco. So I yep. literally did uh, Saturday Kublacon, <laughs> Sunday Strategicon. That's hardcore, man. Yeah, yeah. Well, it helps that they have it Strategicon, they have it at the airport. So uh, it's yeah. literally the right hotel, there. just right it's there. It's right on the other side of whatever that. So I caught a Southwest flight yeah. in the morning, got there, did the thing with Richard Borg, and we did some Kickstarter That's stuff. Awesome. And then uh, Aris Victor, I'm going to give a shout out to Aris, Aris Victor, excuse me, Aris Victor. Met me there a year ago, uh, listened to my Kickstarter presentation with Richard Borg, and has launched their Kickstarter project, which is running right now. Ours Victor is kind of a commanding colors type uh, uh, war game, fantasy game, that type of thing. So Excellent. there's a shout out to Ours Victor. Woo! Now, I'm shout back out. in the project. Shout out. Cool. I don't know. Anything else? Shout out for you, Joe. I mean, this is we do this all the time. Kind of I mean, we kind of rambled a little longer you know, than we yeah, normally do. We are. Uh, you know, I'd like to thank my mother. It oh. couldn't have been possible without her. <laughs> no, nothing else. Uh, just, you know, give it a try. It's a fun game. All right. Yeah. Uh, we yeah. want to thank Joe for being here. We want to thank Yay. all of the uh, RPG folks. Um, we want to thank those who created RPG uh, Free RPG Day, whoever they might be. We want to do a shout out to them. <laughs> and so thanks uh, <laughs> thanks for watching. Yeah. Thanks, and guys. then, uh, yeah. And, and then I think the next time we do this, we'll, we'll do a summary of, you know, our convention and Free RPG Day. And then we might actually have another guest from one of the local game distributors. Um, we're still giving approval on that. Can't say anything yep. yet, but uh, we're going to bring a local game distributor wow. person in, and I think that'll be a good dynamic as well. A lot so. of help. Thanks, Joe. Thanks, guys. Yeah, I appreciate Thanks it. Fun. Thanks for. Yeah, okay, we'll see you next time.